All right, this is section 1.5 for pre-calculus, and we're going to be doing what we call function arithmetic, where it's simply just going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing two functions together in the notation that's associated with that. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to start, though, with a warm-up. I want you to try this problem here and see if you can get a result in a simplified form with this. So pause and try this. This is a nice little introduction for us before we get started with the other items. Oh. I can see a couple of you have not tried it, but I know the rest of you have. So if you haven't tried it, pause it, but here we go. So if we take this function, which is this one right here, and we want to take and take out the x and replace it with 3 plus h. I'm going to do this red piece first right here. So f of 3 plus h, that means that wherever I see an x, I'm going to take it out and put the 3 plus h in. Just like that. Then for this other piece, f of 3, I'm going to take and I'm going to put the 3 in. Now, I don't like to write this all right here, so I'm just going to go up here and do this. So I got this. So this would be 9 plus 15 minus 4. And I believe if I do that right, that would be just 20. And so this is positive 20. I have the minus, so then it would be minus 20 like so. And then I have that still all divided by h. Okay, I hope you were able to get that. Now you expand this out, simplify, and see what happens. So I have 9 plus 6h plus h squared. That thing is expanded out. Plus 15 plus 5h, like so. And then I still have, and I'm going to leave this like this. And I'll show you why in a second. And then this is all over h. So if I look at this now, here's my 9. Here's my 15, and here's my negative 4. Whoa, that's the same thing as this. Amazingly, all of this cancels off. So this is negative 20, and then if I put these three together, that would be positive 20. So those cancel. So what am I left with? Well, what I have then is that I have h squared plus 11h all over h. Now, if you leave it like that, you wouldn't be fully correct. You haven't simplified. So what we do is we what we call the rabbit method. Now, some of you might be familiar with the rabbit method. Some of you may not. But if you have a monomial in the denominator, you can cancel it with every single term in the numerator. And if you can't cancel it, then you just leave it as a fraction. But, however, this is, becomes h squared over h. So I got an h. 11h over h. Yes, 11. And there's the rabbit method, OK? So if you ever see that monomial there, then you can cancel off. And in my simplified form, I just get h plus 11. All right, now the next one, we're going to extend ourselves. Instead of having a 3 here and a 3 here, I'm going to have an x instead. Some of you may want to try this, and some of you may just want to follow along. But it's exactly the same setup. It's just the simplification becomes a little bit different. So if I do this in the same colors as I did before, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I'm going to do this part first again. So wherever I see my x, I'm going to replace it and put in an x plus h. And I put this on the split screen so I can see my function there. And so if I take this first piece, x plus h, quantity squared, minus 5 times x plus h, and my problem keeps on disappearing there. I don't know why. There it is. And then minus 4, that would just be this piece. So you just got to remember to put all your pieces in. Then minus f of x. Well, that's the function in terms of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this in parentheses and do x squared minus 5x minus 4 in parentheses. And this is all over h. So when I come to simplify, well, my 4s will cancel off there, but let's see what happens. I'm going to expand this. So this is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5x minus 5h, not plus 5h. Make sure you distribute properly. Minus 4, and then I got negative x squared plus 5x plus 4 once I distribute this negative through. And that's all over h. Now when I simplify here, 
I can use this. So I got x squared. You see that? x squared, x squared cancels off. Minus 5x, positive 5x cancels off. And then what else? And, oh, there's the 4. That cancels off too. So it looks like I'm just left with items that are in terms of H. And I can see here I made a mistake. Sorry, I got to go back here. But I copied the problem down wrong. That should be a plus. So that's a plus, and that's a plus. Regardless, they still will cancel off. And so that's a minus there. And so they do cancel off. And then it, what I have left is 2xh plus h squared minus 5h all over h. Okay? Now I can do the rabbit. This would be a mutant teenage rabbit with three ears. So I can do this 2x plus h minus 5. That's my result. Okay? So this would be simplified form with dealing with the difference quotient in terms of x. I hope you got that. Okay, the topic for today then, and this will be in some of the homework today too. The topic today then will be function arithmetic. And what we want to do is just show you some different notation that we have. And what is notation? It's how we represent things. Okay, so what we want to do is just look at these things. And, and more than anything, there is no distributive property of functions. And so it's function notation. It's f of x. Okay? And that means that f is a function of x, not times. So when we look at these things, what does this mean? So first of all, if we take f and g, the sum of f and g, f plus g. So here it is right here. There is no distributive property here. This is a function of x. But when we write it, it sure looks like distributive property, but don't think of it like that. All we're doing is we're saying that we're summing the two functions together, and they're both a function of x. All it does is maybe help you in your simplification and evaluation of these things. Okay, the difference of f and g, f minus g is equal to f of x minus g of x. And the product, Hopefully these are pretty straightforward, but it's getting used to the notation. F times G of X is equal to F of X times G of X. Now what I've also put in here is a dot. The dot re represents multiplication. Now some of you are going, well, didn't we use the dot before for some other thing? Well, it was a circle. And when you see F of G like this, this means inverse. We will do this much later. Okay, so right now it's just a solid dot, not an open circle. And then we have the quotient, f divided by g. And that's just going to be that situation there. Okay, so hopefully it helps us simplify some of these things. And if we look at this, okay, so f, uh, this is an example on the other side. f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x. And g of x is equal to 2 minus 1 over x. So I want to evaluate f of f plus g of 2. So what I can do is I can use the rule that's on the other side and say, okay, f of 2 plus g of 2 is exactly the same thing. That may help me simplify. However, you could add these two functions and then plug in the 2 as well. Either way works. And so this is going to be equal to f of 2 if I plug in 2 here, it's going to be 2 squared plus, plus a negative 3 times 2. And then g of 2, let me do g in blue. So it would be plus 2 minus 1 over 2, like so. And if I put this all together, this would be 4 minus 6 plus 2 minus 1 half. And if you look at this, this is negative 2 plus 2, that's 0. And so I'm left with negative 1 half. So it's just showing you that you can evaluate these in a little bit different ways. I could have just found f of 2, which is negative 2. I could have found g of 2, which is 3 halves, put them together, and I still would have got the same thing. Okay? Uh, this one, f, uh, f times g of negative 3. So this is going to be f, this is how I'm going to do it, f of negative 3 times g of negative 3. Should be the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find f of negative 3 first. 
If I do f of negative 3, why don't you try this? What happens? Looks like I got a bunch of negatives there. Oh, everything turns positive. So that's 18. You go find g. And so I get g of negative 3 is equal to 7 thirds. And since I'm multiplying, I want to leave it or I want to make it into an improper fraction. So I get 18 times 7 thirds. This cancels, so I'm left with a 6, so I get 42. So the product f times g of negative 3 is equal to 42. All right, then part c, f minus g of 0. So if I start with this, I'm going to go f of 0 minus g of 0. What? Do you want to keep on going? Or do you see something? Well, yes, I can put in 0. Oh, I'm going to get 0. That's pretty easy. What about g of 0? What happens there? Oh, I get 2 minus 1 over 0. What happens with this? Well, that's undefined. Well, if it's undefined for one of these functions, then it's going to be undefined overall. So f minus g of 0 is undefined. And if you go back to the last page, it does say that it has to be defined for both functions. And so f and g are functions, and x is in both domains of f and g. Well, this particular x value is not in the domain for g, so then overall it's going to be undefined. doesn't work. Okay, what if we find f minus g in general and then state its domain? So if I go f minus g, what's going to happen, and since it's of x, it's going to be just f of x minus g of x. I'm just going to take these two functions and subtract them. And so this is not too difficult because things don't go together. x squared minus 3x, and then I'm going to go minus. I like to, I like to put square brackets when I do minus because then it helps me remember to distribute the negative, or I think it does. And then so I have x squared minus 3x minus 2 plus 1 over x. No combining there. Nothing I can do. However, when I look at the domain, is that the domain I run into trouble when x is equal to 0. So this does not include 0, but it does work for all other values of x. So if I talk about my domain, and I'm going to put interval notation now. Interval notation, remember that if we do a round bracket, that means it doesn't include. If you ever have infinity, you don't include infinity, because you can't. So you're going to put a round bracket next to infinity. Then it's going to go up to 0. Does it include 0? Well, we just said no. So it's going to be another round bracket. So that's one interval. And then I'm going to union that together with the other interval from 0 up to infinity. Round bracket. Doesn't include infinity. Round bracket on the 0. Why? Well, obviously, we're not including it because it does not work. If it did include 0, we would put a square bracket. Okay. Now, what if I do f divided by g? So this is the same thing as f of x all over g of x. And that's going to be equal to x squared minus 3x all over 2 minus 1 over x. And these things we can simplify sometimes, whatever. But the main thing that right now is that we want to look at the domain. So when I look at the domain right now, I have two situations. I already know from our beginning that x can't be 0 because that's the domain of g. x can't be 0. But I also have this situation now where I put g in the denominator. So I also have to look at 2 minus 1 over x can't equal 0 either. And if I solve this, x can't be, and I can just replace these, it's going to be positive, can't be 1 half either. So that's one thing with the domain. The other thing is that I want to simplify this. So if I simplify, I call this compound denominators or compound fractions. What happens is that I got a fraction inside of a fraction. How you can always eliminate a fraction with inside a fraction is that you take all the smaller denominators and you multiply by the LCDs of those. Well, here there's only one smaller denominator, which is this x. So the LCD of just x is going to be x. 
So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x's, and I make sure that I distribute as well. So this one would become x cubed minus 3x squared. That's my numerator. And then my denominator, yes, i got to multiply the 2 times the x. And then when I multiply by this x, it will cancel out. That's the whole idea. I want to get rid of my compound fractions, so I multiply by the LCD of all the smaller fractions. So that is my simplified function. Then finally, I want to write my domain. So my domain, I start at negative infinity, round bracket though, and I'm going to go to 0. That's going to be then 0. What do I go up to? Well, it can't be 1 half. So I go up to 1 half, and then I union that again with 1 half to infinity. Okay? So this is some different ideas behind the arithmetic behind functions. Don't get caught up in the notation. And realize also that this isn't really a distributed property, but it's f of x minus g of x. That's all. And then you may have to go find domains and simplify some of these in your homework. Okay, we'll have a website homework or in-class work and maybe some book problems too. Thank you very much. Have a great day.